Time History. Over time, transportation has evolved from this to this. And by 2030, this is how the world will travel. Tech gurus from around the globe have predicted that in years to come, it will take no less than 30 minutes to travel from Los Angeles to San Francisco on public transport, compared to an 8-hour, 30-minute bus ride. From the invention of the wheel to the steam engine, the combustion engine to jet propulsion, we've seen significant advancements in means of transportation over the years. However, the future is about to bring something even more extraordinary to the table. We're talking about autonomous vehicles, hyperloops, rocket travel, and much more. These innovations will not only revolutionize the way we travel, but also change the way we think about transportation. So fasten your seatbelt and stay with us till the end as we show you the top futuristic modes of transportation that are sure to blow your mind. In 1917, Glenn Curtis unveiled the idea of the first flying car, and since then, it's sparked an interest in the minds of tech futuristic enthusiasts. As of October 2022, the world stepped out of sci-fi into reality when the first officially recognized flying taxi, Xpeng X2, was introduced at Gitex Global in Dubai. Built to house just two people, the Xpeng X2 is a fifth-generation electric vertical takeoff taxi, or eVTOL, that's driven by eight distinct propellers and can lift as much as 1,235 pounds. This autonomous eVTOL multicopter can run up to 81 miles an hour and has a current flight time of about 35 minutes. And although this flight time limits its traveling distance, this certainly isn't a bad start. The future of air taxis seems bright as innovations continue to amass across company platforms. In 2010, collaboration between Boeing and Kitty Hawk Company gave rise to Whisk Air, which is now on its sixth generation of making eVTOLs and has completed over 1,600 successful test flights. According to Whisk Air CEO Gary Geisen, their innovations will enable clients to skip traffic and arrive at destinations faster and with zero emissions. Unlike the Xpeng X2, the Whisk Air has a proprietary 12 propeller design. It can carry four passengers up to a distance of 90 kilometers safely. Whisk aircraft also exceeds today's rigorous aviation safety standards, with a one in a billion chance of an accident. Joby Aviation is another front runner in the air taxi space. On February 8th of 2023, they completed two of the five stages required to become FAA certified. Joby recently teamed up with Delta Airlines, which granted a $60 million initial investment to incorporate Joby services into Delta's customer-based platforms. This will enable customers to enjoy hassle-free, zero-emission flights to and from LAX and JFK. Joby's latest eVTOL, the S4 Air Taxi 2.0, is a five-seater air taxi with six tilting propellers on both the fixed wing and its V-tail. With that many propellers, you'd think this eVTOL would contribute to noise pollution, but surprisingly, it's the opposite. Let's have a listen to this demonstration. The S4 Air Taxi 2.0 is reported to be a hundred times quieter than a helicopter and travels at a maximum speed of 200 miles an hour. That's almost three times the speed of a hungry cheetah. With this unbelievable speed, Joby Aviation is confident they could have Uber-like air taxis by 2024. We might witness one of the most breathtaking sci-fi movie scenes come to reality. We hope that with the advancement in drone technology, artificial intelligence, and improved electrification processes, the day will come when we would rather rush up to our flat-roofed helipad than into the streets as we leave for the office or take a trip. Not everyone would like the idea of air taxis, especially those who fear heights. Fortunately, alternative land transportation technology is picking up speed in the U.S. Maglev trains. Maglev, standing for magnetic levitation, is a rail transportation technology that uses two sets of electromagnets, one to repel and push the train up off the track, and another to propel the elevated train ahead, utilizing the absence of friction. The concept of magnetic levitation was first dreamt up by American scientists Robert Goddard and Emile Bachelet in the early 1900s. However, due to technological restraints of the time, the concept would wait to gain traction for three decades. In 1933, after working for about 10 years, German scientist Hermann Kemper succeeded in creating a technical concept for a floating vehicle based on the principle of electromagnetic attraction. He applied for a patent in Berlin and received it in 1934, 
patent number 643316. Today, maglev technology has soared beyond expectations. There are six commercial maglev systems currently operating globally, one in Japan, two in South Korea, and three in China. China's Shanghai maglev holds records as the world's first and fastest commercial high-speed maglev, possessing a cruising speed of 431 kilometers an hour, or 268 miles an hour, and running for approximately 30 kilometers, or 18.6 miles, from downtown Shanghai to Pudong International Airport. Additionally, China has two low-speed maglev systems operating at 100 kilometers, or 62 miles an hour, the Changsha maglev and the S1 line of the Beijing subway system. Japan plans to outdo the competition and raise the bar higher come 2027 by inventing a high-speed maglev system called the Chuo Shinkansen. This electric speed train will connect Nagoya to Tokyo, covering 286 kilometers, or 178 miles. It's projected to travel at a distance of 500 kilometers, or 310 miles an hour. Additionally, there are plans to extend the route to Osaka, which is 514 kilometers or 319 miles from Tokyo, after a decade. Once completed, the Chuo Shinkansen is expected to make the Tokyo-Osaka trip in just 67 minutes. But China, Japan, and Korea are not the only countries interested in maglev space. US-based multi-billionaire and CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, reinvigorated the concept of combining magnetic levitation and electric propulsion to power a negatively pressured tube, giving passengers the illusion of floating to their destination. This way, passengers could travel at airline speeds at a fraction of the cost of air travel. Musk coined this transportation system, the Hyperloop. We'll be able to be faster than the world's fastest bullet train. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. The acceptance of the Hyperloop is likely to expand in the years ahead, as it's expected to provide greater cost savings to commuters as a cheaper, faster, and more energy-efficient mode of transportation. The original Hyperloop Alpha concept paper envisions sending 20 to 30 passengers per pod hurling towards their destination at cruise speeds of 700 miles an hour. The concept allowed for one-way pods to be sent from Los Angeles to San Francisco every two to three minutes at estimates of $20 a ticket. While some may regard Musk as the most inventive person alive, Virgin Hyperloop took the idea a step further when it transported two of its employees using the levitated tube for approximately 6.25 seconds at a speed of over 100 miles an hour. Virgin Hyperloop One Company CEO Jay Walder believes that more can be done with the interstate highway system instead of relying on its 60-year operation and that it's time to try out a more innovative approach to rail travel and the Hyperloop might just be able to do that. Other potential uses for the Hyperloop include cargo transportation, which Virgin Hyperloop is also considering exploring. If this is successful, the impact on international trade would be significant, since countries will experience enhanced physical products moving in less time and with less energy use. Hyperloop manufacturers are working tirelessly as plans for upgraded Hyperloops are in the pipeline. One of the most sophisticated Hyperloop projects in the United States has plans to be built in the Great Lakes region by Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, a US-based research company. In the first phase, this VAC train is anticipated to connect Cleveland and Chicago, allowing passengers to make the 313-mile trip in just 30 minutes. With time, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies plans to extend routes to 12 cities total in the Great Lakes mega region, hyperconnecting a territory that produces over $6 trillion, or 30% of the nation's GDP annually. While traveling at a high speed in a vacuum sounds impressive, back in 1995, research scientist Dean Pomerleau and robotics doctoral student Todd Jokum received a bow from the world when NavLab 5, the first self-driving car, made history after it was successfully piloted from Pittsburgh to San Diego. Since then, many improvements and innovations have gone into self-driving cars, many thanks to Elon Musk and his team. However, as much as we love to recline and let our cars do our driving, we haven't completely crossed the self-driving vehicle finish line. In fact, the involved AI and robotic technologies are still in their relative infancy. To contextualize, the Society of Automotive Engineers categorized autonomous vehicles into six levels. Level 5, the highest level, signifies complete autonomy and entails absolutely no human intervention. Level 4 vehicles are capable of self-driving, but only in certain locations and under specific conditions. 
Meanwhile, Level 3 vehicles hand over control to the driver after providing sufficient warnings. This level of automation still requires human interventions, but drivers can take their hands off the wheel in certain circumstances. Level 2 vehicles have partial driving automation, a technology Tesla cars operate on. At this level, drivers still need to be attentive and ready to take control of the vehicle if required. Then, Level 1 cars provide driver assistance systems that can aid in controlling a vehicle's forward and lateral movements. For this level, drivers must remain and be ready to take control of the vehicle at any moment. And finally, at Level 0, the driver is fully responsible at all times. Most autonomous car makers are currently on Level 1, and a few are at Level 2. But last October, Goldman Sachs reported that by 2030, approximately 15% of car sales are expected to consist of vehicles equipped with Level 3 and higher autonomous technologies. This is a significant increase from 2020, when there were no such sales. The majority of these sales will come from semi-automated vehicles that can take charge of safety-critical tasks, but require the driver to intervene in specific situations. High-level technology and artificial intelligence would be leveraged to make the ride more enjoyable and stress-free. There are already over 250 autonomous vehicle companies worldwide. Most companies, such as Volvo, Tesla, and Toyota, still operate on Level 2 automation. But in January of 2023, Mercedes-Benz introduced DrivePilot and became the first certified Level 3 autonomous car company in the United States. This Level 3 automation will be available in the 2024 S-Class and EQS sedan models. The first batch will be delivered to customers in July of 2023. Autonomous vehicles will release us from the burden of our daily commute, allowing us more time to sink into whatever our desires may be during transit, reducing stress and improving well-being of the traveler. And because autonomous vehicle owners will be able to use voice-activated GPS services to drive the car to hospitals or other places of assistance in case they're incapacitated, it's possible for self-driving cars to significantly impact response to all types of emergencies. It's safe to say that self-driving cars are the future of land transport and airships are the future of aerial cargo and personnel transport. These graceful floating and flying whales of the sky are a staple of alt-history and alt-reality fiction. When they show up in a story as an everyday mode of transportation, you know you're journeying down a path of what must be another reality. But is this soon to change? The pioneering design of the first airship is widely attributed to Ferdinand von Zeppelin, the German engineer and inventor who conceptualized it in 1900. And although it might forever remain tainted by the tragic Zeppelin-Hindenburg accident of 1937, airships have gained renewed interest. They can potentially serve as a low-carbon alternative to other modes of transportation like airplanes or cargo ships. Today, top aviation companies like Lockheed Martin, Hybrid Air Vehicles, and Worldwide Aeros Corporation are already in the business of refurbishing airships into a viable means of transportation, thanks to recent technological advancements and a renewed interest in sustainable transportation options. There's been a surge of investment in airship technology, with several companies receiving funding for their projects. U.S.-based aerospace corporation Lockheed Martin received a $480 million contract from the U.S. military to develop an airship that can transport heavy cargo. Google's co-founder Sergey Brin also joined the moving train in 2015 and started an electric airship project called Lighter Than Air Research, or LTA. By 2017, LTA was already making plans for their 600-foot Pathfinder airship which utilizes 3D printing and carbon fiber tubing to reduce costs and speed up production. On the exterior, the Pathfinder airship would be made from a three-layer laminate of synthetics, similar to sails in racing boats. The airship would be fully electric and fly-by-wire, a technology not possible eight decades ago. It will also have LiDAR units installed on top of each helium gas cell to aid pilots in orientation. On completion, the Pathfinder airship is expected to carry almost 100 tons up to 10,000 miles and also break the record as the largest airship built since the 1931 Goodyear blimp. While there have been concerns over the safety of airships following the Hindenburg disaster, researchers noted that using hydrogen instead of helium, which is lighter but more expensive to attain, is a preferred alternative. Furthermore, these researchers believe that hydrogen-driven airships could potentially produce water and energy through the use of fuel cells on board. 
Unlike conventional planes, modern airship designs can be used in remote areas where traditional aircraft have difficulty operating, such as in the oil and gas industry or for scientific research. This will also help with rescue missions and other humanitarian services if the need arises. Then, of course, there's the promotion of reduced carbon footprints. If we need to make technological advancements, we must do so without further punishing the planet. What else does the airship have going in its favor? Well, it requires less infrastructure in its operation. Unlike the conventional airplane, the airship requires no runways or landing tarmacs. This means that airship hangars might be located closer to residential areas than most airports, which are located further away. There are even plans to develop airships for use in cargo transportation, which could potentially reduce the shipping industry's carbon footprint. According to Tom Grundy, CEO of Hybrid Air Vehicles, the airship travel market currently stands at $50 billion. By the end of 2026, this figure will spike to a whopping $165 billion. Airship technology is still in its early stages, but there's already much excitement and potential surrounding this mode of transportation. Airships are set to burst onto the public scene this year in addition to a $5 million prize offered for the winners of the World Airship Race. This race is scheduled between September 2023 and October 2024, with the finish line being crossed in Paris, France. While it's true that airships still face some challenges that need to be addressed before they can become mainstream modes of transportation, the future looks promising. Others have begun rooting for the idea of luxurious airships transporting the wealthy to exotic locations such as the Arctic. When the public sees the elites boarding these fancy airships, it'll signify that the old flying whales are back for good. With continued advancements in technology and a growing interest in sustainable transportation options, there's reason to be optimistic about the potential for airships to play a more prominent role in transportation in the years to come. In 1986, the idea of intercity rocket travel was birthed during a State of the Union address where former U.S. President Ronald Reagan expressed his desire to see passengers transported to cities in rocket-like vehicles. As a matter of fact, he enacted a policy to get NASA to try this out. He expected that there would be some sort of Orient Express that would reduce the nearly 13-hour journey from the United States to Tokyo to just two hours. Although the U.S. program was later canceled in 1993 due to cost concerns and likely limited technology, SpaceX's lower launch costs may see the rebirth of this lofty transportation style. If SpaceX continues to bring down its launch costs from $1,500 per kilogram to as low as $10 per kilogram, this market could grow to a $10 billion market for passengers and a $20 billion market for cargo. However, if it performs well and captures the first class and business class frequent flyers, we could be looking at a $50 billion market. What could potentially hinder the implementation of these futuristic transportation systems? Well, for starters, regulation plays a huge role in advancing any chosen technology. Unfortunately, regulatory delays and political bureaucracy have led to the abandonment and non-implementation of some of the infrastructure needed for the takeoff of some of the above-mentioned transport systems. It should be noted that unique infrastructure requirements would come with these never-before-seen and never-before-used vehicles, some of which might involve further engineering research. From hyperloops to flying taxis to autonomous cars and rocket travel, our future travel possibilities are truly spectacular. With ongoing advancements in technology and innovation, the way we travel is set to change dramatically. And with it, so will our future planet. If you found this video fascinating, please subscribe for notifications on our latest and upcoming videos. We'll continue to investigate ideas and visions that are shaping our world. Thank you very much for watching. Which of these modes of transportation are you most excited about? Let us know in the comments below.